I was expecting to see Nassim Nicholas Taleb sitting across from me. Instead, on October the 31st, Halloween, we have Black Swan Man? Well, I mean, this is Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. This is a joke made by <laughs> a few friends and colleagues. And, uh, and I guess today is the day to wear it. The, yes, the, today the, would the, be the, the day to wear it. This cartoon, you know, to represent a bunch of... There's an online comic uh, book, Black exactly, Swan Man. Yeah, and also to represent a bunch of ideas and embed them in that cartoon. So the cartoon, and people can see it, blackswanman.com, yeah. bills you effectively as the fearless feathered hero guarding against yeah, well, the evil is, and destructive okay, but, forces I mean, of risk. Of so let's Listen, get serious for got, a moment. They got, no, yeah, but let, let me tell you, they got it wrong because... I'm not, uh, I'm not for perfection, just like these characters, cartoon characters, looking for to be super something. You want to be as fallible as possible and figure out that we human make mistakes, we're human, and, and, and uh, you know, you're just as fallible as others and find where the mistakes are going to lead to catastrophes. Cat okay, so well, that's, that's what you exactly. were doing that's in the lead up to 2008. And that's what we're here to discuss today. Where, where is the vulnerability? Why is the world today more fragile than it was, say, in 2007. Or, it's I, more I, fragile today than it course. was in 2007. Of course, because we have, the same, we have the same symptoms. We have absolutely the same disease. You put Novocaine on cancer, you put Novocaine on cancer, and what happens? The patient isn't going to get better. He's going to feel better, look better, maybe for a while, and at some point you, you have a higher price. Think about it. What was 2007? What was a crisis of debt? It was a debt crisis, there's no well, question. We have, we have a lot more debt today. <laughs> but it's in different that. places. There's been a uh -huh. consumer deleveraging, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and the housing market isn't uh -huh. nearly as levered as it was back then. Yes, but you don't get a free lunch. In other words, different places does make a difference. Now, where is it? It moved to governments from, uh, you know... And corporate balance sheets. And corporate balance sheets. And corporate balance sheets, of course, it did fuel the stock market rally was corporation either investing their cash, you know, when, with zero interest rates in uh, their own stock or borrowing in, in many cases. I mean, we have two point some trillion dollars additional corporate borrowing. And then, of course, governments. Governments, they think they borrow for free till, aha, they, they need to borrow a lot. So either they got to print money or borrow uh, at higher and higher rates. I mean, we have to borrow more than uh, this year, more than three, uh, more than one point some trillion dollars. That's trillion dollars or something. And then think about it. We're incurring higher and higher. Uh, when you say we, you're speaking of the U.S. We, we, government. U.S. government. We're, uh, uh, taxpayers are paying for it. We're paying, you know, uh, three hundred some tr uh, uh, billion dollars of interest. Every higher year. rates. Every year. Higher rates. More interest, higher rates. You may enter a spiral. What does that mean? It means we, if, if we, what is a debt spiral in your mind? In my, in my mind is when governments have to borrow, it's like a Madoff scheme, when you have to borrow more and more to pay interest. A Madoff scheme or a Ponzi scheme, but let's name it, call it Madoff, is when you have to borrow to repay creditors. And that's what we are doing. The, the minute you enter that phase, there's, uh, there's nothing healthy about it uh, from an economic standpoint. That there is a large amount yes. of federal debt yes. is not new to the United States. Yeah, but we, have, we, we, we accumulated an additional trend, ten, uh, ten, so, some 10 trillion last, last phase since the crisis. Right. Okay, that's not... That's, that's, and, and even more now with the tax cut and course, the need whatever. We're accumulating more and more, plus we have hidden... Finance the deficits. Plus we have hidden liabilities that should count as debt. Like? Social Security, you have hidden liabilities. You have hidden uh, liabilities when you have to bail out firms. When you have, uh, we have hidden liabilities from student debt that, that are not going to be. I mean, you have, you have a lot of things, uh, a lot of debt that, I mean, if, if you so, could commit it to, to, to some expenditures, so on top of the nominal debt, you have some hidden uh, liabilities that should count like debt. And this scene, let's yes. work with your analogy. Yes. Right. Every Ponzi scheme eventually collapses. Everyone, practically. This Ponzi scheme, I mean, in, in, there ways. In, again, in your term, yes. is going to collapse as well? I mean, we're starting to see, uh, uh, you remember years ago we had crisis, we had that crisis, and it starts in countries like Argentina, mm -hmm. it starts in, uh, in 82, it started in, 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 in Latin American countries. Today, this is hitting the core, it's not the periphery. 
This is heading to the core. We're starting to have a country like Italy, uh, uh, and it's getting close to us ourselves. We have to borrow a lot. So the point, how do you get out of the accumulated are, debt? Are you predicting a sovereign debt crisis? I am not. Uh, the thing will translate itself into some other measures, okay? Like what? Like, for example, in the U.S., uh, usually what do you do to get rid of debt? In the past, okay, the normal solution is inflation. But the minute you start creating a little bit of inflation, it's so uncontrollable. It's an animal that we have learned uh, from the 70s. It's not easy to tame. So if you increase, if you increase, uh, try to increase the base inflation, uh, hope, 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 hopefully to, you know, to work yourself out of debt, it's going to be on the price, you know, stability will not be there and it's going to be, un un traditionally has been not controllable. So I think we're hitting a point where you have, you need buyers for your debt. Sure. Uh, the Chinese and, and, and the oil producing states, you know, were regular customers. Uh, maybe they're not going to be there. Okay, plus you need more and more. So at some point, I, th th don't tell me it's healthy. It's not going to be healthy. So that's yeah. But so, what okay. I'm trying to understand, yes. and what yes. everyone who's listening to you right now is trying yes. to understand, is how does it play out? We saw how it played out in 2008. Yes, well, right. In 2008, were, in 2007, 2008, there was a collapse okay. in the subprime mortgage okay. market, and, and then it, it metastasized right yes, into a it, collapse of the housing market, and ultimately yes. it almost took down the financial system. 2008, we transferred the debt from individuals to the states, okay? That's 2008. So you had at least a way to do things. And we could lower rates as monetary policy to zero, which of course didn't help because you don't cure a structural problem with monetary policy. It should be there only as emergency measures. Now, 10 years later, okay, we're starting to raise rates because you have to raise rates. You can't keep them at low level. It's unhealthy to keep them at low level. You're gonna raise rates. So someone's gonna pay the price. Who's gonna pay the price of higher rates? A lot of people who benefited from that free money, namely corporations. Over, UK, over levered corporations. And, or, and especially real estate. So the, the first shoe to drop would be probably real estate. Real estate because real estate is very sensitive. Okay. And the higher end real estate has already been gone down worldwide without anybody know. I mean, people talking don't about it because people notice, but they don't talk about it because it's not shown yet in the numbers because that's what quantitative easing increased, among other bad things, inequality, and... Um, so uh, real estate uh, yes. is most vulnerable. The higher end real estate first, right. and then the rest of real estate, so you, as we saw. You predict another collapse in the real estate market. It will start with real estate. If anything, odds are we'll start real estate, and then we'll, you know, we'll see well, like... What comes after replay. that? Stock market, I mean, think about it. Is that what we're seeing today? No, I mean, no. what we're seeing today is, is nothing. Not today specifically, market, but the no, last couple of no, weeks. No, but I mean, think, you cannot maintain a high valuation in the stock market in the presence of high interest rates. Plus, interest rates typically, from my experience as a volatility trader for 35 years, uh, the, the problem is high interest rates, you always observe on high interest rate volatility, they get masks with low interest rates. So with higher interest rates, we're gonna see some volatility. Now, seeing people know you for yeah. the, the prediction, if you will. No, prediction, for risk detection. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, no, no, risk no, detection and No, 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 but they equate you with, the, with a person who, who effectively predicted the financial crisis. I didn't predict. I showed the risks of a system that was fragility of system. My okay. specialty is fragility of system. I understand. But, so you can call it prediction if you like, but... <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I'm not saying that yes. you're a predictor. Yeah. I'm saying that people equate you with yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and you've told me at the yes. beginning of this conversation yes. and at several points along the way... Yeah that you believe the system today is more fragile more fragile than, than it was, was in 2007. Yes. Exactly. When we had the greatest financial crisis. It's the same fragility that we have from 2007 that we masked. In, in more than 70 years. We so where mask. do we go from here? Do we go to uh, okay. a, a, another crisis that's worse than no, the last one? What, what we need, it, the thing that would save us, all right, miraculously, is, is either growth that we, without debt, what we're seeing here now is 4.2% growth with debt, doesn't work. Real growth, maybe miraculously, would take us out. Or maybe some kind of inflation that would not be caused too much price instability. And, and we've never seen that. Okay, it's smooth inflation. Unless we have these two, all right, we're, we're doomed. What do you think happens to interest rates? That we're going to be forced to have them higher. But, I mean, you don't. How just, much higher? Today, if I look at. If I, look I, I don't know at, how much higher. The 10 but, year but is 315 at, and the 30 year is okay, 340. But, uh, look, look at what will happen from interest rates. We have to borrow more than a trillion, okay, today for next year. 
Now, if you raise interest rates, and we have a lot, if you raise interest rates 100 basis points, think of the cost on the total debt. Okay, we're already paying, you know, part of the deficit. 380 billion come from interest servicing, so debt servicing. So think about it. You have a um, you have a, a, a spiral coming from that that you have to borrow more just to pay the interest more and more. That's a deficit by itself. The other miracle that can happen is if we suddenly figure out a way to fix the mandatory spending and lower these, uh, these, these monsters that we have of $2 trillion. Uh, yeah. As you've said, yeah. your expertise is identifying risk yes. and evaluating fragility. Yes. But we both know that fragility has consequences. You've already said that it's going to manifest in possibly a collapse in the real estate market, that it's going to hit the stock market. If interest rates go higher, obviously bond prices go lower so that there's no safety in the bond market. Is there anywhere that you can see Yes. That's actually safe. Um, maybe we have some, maybe, I mean, I, I tell you what I do because it's kind of the game. I own some gold, but I'm confused about it. I just own it just in case. Okay. okay. I own some gold just in case they decided to create inflation or something, uh, just to be safe. Um, I, I own some, some land that has not appreciated considerably because a non speculative area that produces uh, all of you know, stuff. Uh, but I, I don't see anything except watching your cash inflation hedged and also if your own stocks have put protection, have some kind of way to limit your downside because uh, the tail risks are as big, if not bigger, than they were, uh, you know, uh, 2007 and, and, and before that. So, so, so I, I'd worry about tails.